It's Thursday, January 19th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, show number 735, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Geek News Central is also sponsored in part by GoToMyPC. Get your free trial at GoToMyPC.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. And by Mosey for business. Get 15% off using promo code PODCAST15 at moseypro.com. Hey everyone, it feels like it's been forever since I've been in a chair here. Lots to share, lots to talk about, lots of tech. I mean, it's been an exciting tech day alone. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go fly. Microphone. We're go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no pause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking Honolulu. Hey everyone, it's great to be back. It's been 17, yes, 17 long days since the last uh, Geek News Central. Uh, and you know, there's been a lot of happening between January 2nd and today. We'll talk all about that. I am absolutely ecstatic to be back in the chair i'm still a little bit sick from coming back from vegas we'll talk about that you can probably hear it in my voice i know that uh we've got a lot to catch up on but i want to welcome all of the longtime listeners to the show all of the ohana hey thanks for thanks for hanging out thanks for being uh patient thanks for watching all of our content at ces of course we want to welcome listeners from around the world and hey, for those of you checking out the show for the very first time, maybe you caught uh, the live con content at CES or you've been watching all the great uh, videos that we're putting up at geeknewcentral.com. Really, you want to get subscribed to this show. And it's basically in our, uh, you'll find in our second column of our website, there is a section there where it's basically an orange box. It says subscribe, and then it gives you all the links to RSS, iTunes, Zoom, and so forth. And, of course, you want to get subscribed to our newsletter as well. That will get you uh, informed when we release a show. All the show notes that I have uh, basically posted with the uh, blog post tonight will be in that newsletter. So we encourage you to get over to geeknewscentral.com and get signed up for the newsletter and, of course, get subscribed to the show. That special media feed, it's smoking. And many of you are dialed into it. We want to make sure that you stay dialed into it. So uh, get subscribed to it because we're going to be punching stuff to you very, very quickly. And the, and the blogging team already is, is cranking. Um, now my goal is to stay ahead of them um, and getting videos pushed up. The other team members have been a little bit slow coming out of the gate. And I sent an email to them tonight and I said, hey, I'm pumping videos. Where are you guys at? in the scheme of things. So hopefully we're going to see um, Andy McCaskey's videos. We're going to see some of Andy Hardhat. We're going to see some of Courtney's. We're going to see some of Steve Lee's. So all the team members that were with us at CES stuff will be uh, coming back. Well, I'm going to tell you, the studio, when I got back from Vegas, was essentially tore apart. And I didn't realize how tore apart it was because – as gear started coming back and FedEx started making deliveries, I started putting everything together. And, well, I guess the best way to start up is when I arrived back Saturday, um, no, Sunday, <coughs> excuse me. When I arrived back Sunday, I was already flu central. I was already pretty much stick a fork in me. I was done. Um, so Monday, just sicker than a dog. Tuesday, recovering. Uh, Wednesday, feeling a little better, and here I am today. And I didn't even know if I was going to have a voice today because last night I had no voice. <coughs> and I still got this cough. So um, I'm going to be ha probably hacking on you guys tonight. I need one of these uh, um, silencing buttons, but I don't have one. But anyway, 
the audio levels I think are off. I think the camera lighting is off, all this stuff. So I just had to get the show out. Um, and, uh, and hopefully it, it turns out pretty good. I, I don't know if it will or not. It's, it is going to be what it is going to be, but, um, 17 days, is a long time to go between doing shows. I had was full intention to do a show that Thursday before I left, but it was, I was buried, you know, getting ready to have 18 people in Vegas. And I just, uh, I reached my saturation point and couldn't do it. So um, back with you. We'll be back on schedule. Things are going to be even more crazy around here over the next month. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But um, boy, oh boy, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be back. And the weather here in Honolulu has been, how should I say it, muggy. I got back and the trade winds were gone and we were getting uh, southern winds, which brings in high humidity. So it hasn't been a great, uh, how should we say it, um, time to come back to Honolulu, especially with the, and of course it's 80, can't complain, but the humidity has been high. So, but anything else, just trying to recover and get things back uh, in the swing of things here. So I hope you'll be patient with me, but uh, we're going to have a Saturday morning tech. Uh, that's going to definitely be going on this coming Saturday morning at 9 Pacific, 12 noon, East, 12 noon Eastern. And then Jeffrey Powers and I are going to be doing a tech podcast roundtable. Um, that's one of the first ones that we've done in, in a number of, of months. Uh, we're going to have two great topics we're going to be talking about. So Saturday is going to have a, basically two to three hours of content in the morning. So you definitely want to get tuned in. Um, probably, well, Saturday morning tech will probably talk a lot about the past couple of weeks. So it should be a good way to, uh, to get caught up. Um, otherwise you can reach me here at the show, um, at geek news and, uh, you just reach out to me on Twitter or you can email us here at geek news at gmail.com geek news at gmail.com and the voicemail hotline or the show hotline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 619-342-7365. Um, just to quickly summarize what's been going on, uh, we basically, for those of you that watch, we had huge numbers. Um, I think our top streaming day, we had uh, a peak of 36,000 total people on the stream uh, throughout the, I think Thursday was our biggest streaming day. And uh, so they all didn't hang out at the same time, but a total of about 36,000 people on the stream that day. Um, so we were really stoked Friday. We were one of the last teams that were streaming uh, live at CES. So that brought us a lot of people, but, um, big, big, big event. And we've got a lot of work yet to do. You'll see a lot of the stuff coming up, um, on the site. So again, stay subscribed to the special media events feed here at Geek News Central or even over at TPN.TV, uh, where we'll have all the content that's going to be coming up there probably quicker than it will come up at, uh, at Geek News Central. I do want to talk just a little bit about my time in Vegas. This year we stayed off the Strip. We stayed in downtown Las Vegas. And this is the first time I've ever stayed in downtown. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, you guys kind of know when I, I'm a kind of a country boy at heart. I, you know, I grew up in the country and um, it was a little bit more laid back. I guess for a better word, it was less uh, aggressive and less, uh, you know, it was a difference between staying at a, you know, three or four, probably like four star at the Monte Carlo than staying at a three star, two and a half, three star downtown. Um, and we stayed at the Plaza, which was for years had a horrible, I mean, a horrible reputation. And they have completely remodeled. The, the hotel was closed and casino was closed for a full year. Um, they went through and remodeled. The rooms were fantastic. Uh, restaurants were great. The only thing <clears throat> that I didn't like at the uh, plaza was the smell of the casino itself. They used some sort of air freshener that just did not agree with me. And that's basically to try to mask smoke. And I would almost rather smell smoke than smell what they use as an air freshener. It was just a little overpowering. But other than that, cheap saved us a lot of money about five hundred dollars a hotel room and definitely from a food perspective it was cheaper as well so kind of an interesting stay at downtown and uh might be something you would consider a place you'd consider if you're trying to save some money when you go to uh, to vegas the team was fantastic a team of 18 
Um, boy, oh boy, it was, uh, it seems like a whirlwind. And actually, when you get back, actually that uh, day following the close of the show, Saturday, Andy McCaskey and I were running out to UPS. The rest of the team was gone. Um, everyone flew out between Friday night and Saturday early morning. So it was just Andy and I were left in the hotel um, Saturday. And we were kind of just like in this daze, really. I mean, it was just kind of like, ugh. you know, we'd been going seven days hard and uh, just nonstop. And uh, so getting on the airplane Sunday morning, it was like the show hadn't even really ended yet. And then getting sick on top of that was was crazy. Uh, all my gear's back except for three tripods. So that those are somewhere in California. It's, uh, FedEx sent them one way, and they were supposed to go the other. So that stuff will get back. So far, it looks like everything came back in one piece. I uh, was a little bit scared tonight when I fired up the TriCaster for the second time after being back. One of the I was getting a little blurring on the images, but it turned out I had a controller here that was halfway in between a, a setting. So other than that, I think we're pretty good. And uh, we'll see how everything goes over the next couple of weeks. But um, here's the schedule. I'm going to be heading out. Actually, this coming Sunday, I'm going out to California for four days. Things were really kind of moving pretty fast at CES. I made some good connections. And I have actual client meeting, a very important client meeting um, in the San Francisco, Silicon Valley area on um, Tuesday. So I'm going to fly out Sunday night. I'm going to stay Tuesday, Wednesday in uh, in Silicon Valley. Then I'm going to come back to Honolulu on on Thursday. So kind of an unexpected trip. So that uh, be down and back, and then uh, be back here. But the shows will be um, two shows. Well, one show on the road next week, and then we'll have uh, the show Thursday here next week as scheduled. So um, kind of crazy schedule right off the get go. I do want to thank GoDaddy. For being one of our sponsors at CES, of course, being a sponsor here at uh, at Geek News Central as well, and I've got a great deal for you. I actually got an email from my <clears throat> from my uh, my aid, basically the agent over there, and they're going to offer up a a dot com a dot co a dot co domain for seventeen ninety nine. Uh, this is a pretty good price off their normal pricing. So basically, what you're going to do here, and let me actually load this up, copy the link. Let's see if I can bring this up in the page. Um, if you use the promo code dot co four dot co four, let me bring this up dot co four. You're going to get a seventeen ninety nine per year. You're going to lock in the price for that dot co um, domain. And of course, we still have the other deals going on. The CES two domain with a deal which gets you twenty five percent off their fourth generation hosting, and they've been doing a great job. Uh, we've moved. Uh, I think in the last two days, we moved about 13 terabytes of media from the stuff that we've uploaded so far and people are subscribing to without a hiccup. So that's pretty powerful stuff that they're being able to handle that. So that fourth generation hosting, again, is is fantastic. It uh, It's really going to – that 25% off code can be combined with a, with a special. So uh, definitely pick up one of their plans. And, again, it's a 12-month or more plan. And if you see it on sale, you can you can you basically combine the codes, and of course, all my codes over at geeknewscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. Thank GoDaddy for being a sponsor here. Let me look at my list and see what I've got to talk about. Uh, we've got some other sponsors. We'll take care of that a little later. But I don't want to waste much too much more time before we get right into uh, the content here that I've got in the stack for you, and. Um, and then we'll take care of the last two sponsors here uh, mid-show. Um, let me bring up Chrome here for my first article. And boy, oh boy, big news today was essentially, of course, we'll talk about the SOPA blackout in, in just a minute. But the uh, the big news today was day after the SOPA blackout, the Department of Justice and ICE shut down a mega upload. And they charged seven people connected with it for running an international enterprise based on internet piracy. They seized like they seized like uh, seventy bank accounts, um, captured like fifty million dollars worth of total property. Uh, this is just amazing. Eighteen domains. They executed twenty search warrants. Yeah, they seized fifty million dollars in assets, um, well over a couple of thousand servers. 
And they're going to go through these things, and uh, I'm sure people that were using these sites illegally, they're going to go after them as well. So uh, this share, you know, basically this file sharing site is completely under the uh, now the ownership of the Department of Justice. But we're looking at this, and you know, initially you think, well, Mega Upload was just a place where people could use, just like Dropbox, or you send it, you could use it to put files, and people could download them, but based upon some of the email stuff that the feds have released, there was obviously a lot more going on. But uh, a resident of Germany, Slovakia, uh, a couple of folks in New Zealand, Estonia, they're all been indicted. Um, they've seized a, uh, seized a whole bunch of cars, Mercedes-Benz, Mini Cooper. Um, this guy must have loved Mercedes-Benz because I think they seized four or five Mercedes-Benz um, and a whole bunch of cash. But this guy and this team, basically in emails, were talking about uh, all of the uh, um, all of the things going on about takedown notices, and it's it does not really look good. They did not help themselves in their email chains back and forth to one another. But uh, there's a 72 page indictment against them, and uh, it's boy they. Uh, they have really took a big hit here. Uh, cars, art, you name it, they've seized it. But there was a report on ours talking about how the uh, mega upload was eating up more corporate bandwidth than Dropbox. And a company out of uh, Palo Alto was tracking about 76,000 gigabytes a day being moved back and forth between corporate sites and mega upload. So you just wonder how much of, and a lot of that was trying to be masked as well with a, a tool called Tor. So it just makes you wonder how many people were downloading movies at work and, or was there actual legitimate uh, file traffic going on? So it, uh, it just goes to show that um, this thing was a very popular website. Uh, I think they did $150 million last year in, in revenue I don't know what their profit was on that, but um, it was big. There was, and the folks at Pal Alto Network said that they were tracking uh, 1,600 businesses that were moving data back and forth between Mega Upload um, and uh, and the corporate website. Now, Anonymous went immediately went nuclear on them, and they have just went on a rampage today, um, basically doing denial of service attacks and. Uh, traffic up was up like 17% on the internet today alone from this uh, this combined track. They went after multiple sites, um, Department of Justice, Motion Picture Association of America, MPAA, Universal Music, Belgian Anti-Piracy Federation, the RIAA, FBI, uh, U.S. Copyright Office, Universal Music France, Senator Chris Dodd's website, Vivendi France, the White House, BMI, Warner, uh, Warner Music Group, and many of these sites were offline for a long time when this was, attack was going on. This was what some are saying the biggest coordinated uh, denial of service attack against as many sites um, as people can even remember. Now, this could spell for some very bad things because, you know, with the SOPA protest yesterday and the PIPA, uh, SOPA slash PIPA protest, you know, basically we got the attention in a big way of all these congressional reps and a whole bunch of people have dropped their support. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but with these attacks going on, it may renew these congressional guys wanting to, you know, have some, uh, some, you know, move forward with this legislation. So I don't know if it's going to help us or hurt us, but here is the, the thing. It's, it's obvious that this was done the day after the protest. And was the Department of Justice did this without SOPA, without PIPA being, you know, basically they seized all these sites, again, with no due process, and uh, arrested a bunch of people. Um, and then basically, if you go to, to megaupload.com now, it's diverting to a DOJ, uh, Department of Justice uh, banner that basically saying the site's been taken down for copyright violations. And uh, none of these guys have had a, a, an ounce of time in, in any court at this point. So it just goes to show you that the government's doing what they want, irregardless of the SOPA, PIPA, you know, being in effect. Now, 
Anonymous was also tricking essentially the internet into helping them with their denial of service attack because they were using um, a tool called LOIC, L-O-I-C, Low Orbit Ion Cannon is what it's uh, termed as. And essentially what happens is, is when you went to a specific site um, that was hosting some code, the the low orbit ion con and loic rapidly reloads a target website and uh, it does it just by you visiting the website you help generate the denial of service attack so what happens is is when it, something like this goes on and they put a link to a website on twitter um, you go to the website and all of a sudden your computer is now helping do the denial of service attack so this could you know that really helps them in shutting down these sites that they want to shut down. And uh, many of those sites were, were crushed today uh, from, you know, from this action and uh, using bots and so forth. So a lot of action today on the anonymous slash ICE Homeland Security, everything taking this website down. So we're going to see, I'm sure over the coming days, some huge fallout on this. You just don't go shut down the FBI, the Department of Justice, the White House website. You know, you don't go messing with those types of um, organizations, governmental organizations, and get away scot-free, there is going to be retribution. And it, it is obvious that the government is not happy with uh, the users, us out here, that have basically been uh, fighting against SOPA and PIPA. And it's, you know, it's kind of like this in-your-face type of action today and taking down Mega Upload. Now, irregardless, if mega upload was being was doing things that uh that they shouldn't have been doing um they should have been allowed their due process in court you know and they could have they could have you know hired their lawyers and and fought against this but uh i guess they had enough in this indictment and i'm sure we'll see more tomorrow about this but uh they uh they definitely went after these folks in a the anonymous did in, in a big way so we'll see if these attacks continue and uh, we'll see what the fallout is and if this gives the congressional reps that are still behind soap and pipa if it gives them time to to reorganize and uh, and move forward with any additional legislation so time will tell now if you've been using mega upload for legitimate purposes and i saw jiggy jaguar on here on chat yeah i got your email just to been overwhelmed haven't been able to send that piece of uh, embed code to you. I'll try to get that to you tonight. Um, on Lifehacker, they talk about five great alternatives to mega upload. Uh, the site I use to send stuff to people is uh, you send it. Uh, that's, the, that's the site I use if I have a big file, I want to transfer it to someone, or I just upload it to FTP to another website. But Rapid Share is a uh, alternative for a site that allows you to upload large files to send to your friends uh, a link to download them. Mediafire is another one. Of course, you send it. Minus is another one. Of course, Dropbox is one that uh, people are very familiar with. Uh, SugarSync and Windows Live Mesh um, are some other sites. Um, but I just wonder, yeah, are these sites next? And uh, you just wonder what's going to happen here. So be curious to see what happens with the response from those sites, whether or not all of a sudden they start kicking a bunch of people um, off their service. Now, let's just face it. If Hollywood made it easier for people to get access to media and didn't have all these antiquated, you know, policies in place, like waiting 45 days before they release a DVD 60 days before they release a, a movie to be allowed to be sold over pay-per-view and all these other issues and their, you know, and their desire to continue to generate as much revenue through box office and all these other avenues that have declining, declining revenue. You now people are just pissed. They want access to media. We all, I pay for a lot of media. Uh, we watch a lot of pay-per-view. We watch, well, basically through, um, our different devices, and um, we, we have DVDs, I have Netflix, and I just can't get everything I want through those services. Now, I'd like to have, you know, there's a, um, some television series. You guys know I cut my cord, and there's some television series I'd like to, to, to purchase. You know, uh, 
ice road truckers. I like them. I like pickers. I like the uh, dog, the bounty hunter. You know, there's about four or five sick, you know, basically regular TV shows that I like that I'd like to be able to, to buy. And uh, I can't. They're not available. So what's my alternative? Well, my alternative is, do I go look for it on peer-to-peer -peer site? Or does someone share a recorded uh, show with me? You know, uh, you know what, what's the other alternative? There isn't one. So that's why people are so, you know, why people are, are doing what they do. There's always going to be people that are not going to pay. I think we all know that. But the majority of us, you know, if I could get stuff at a reasonable price, I don't have a cable bill no more. I'm not paying uh, my local affiliate here a hundred and some dollars a month. So I have that money to be able to spend on the media that I want, and I'm willing to give it to those folks, but it, many times I can't. So the folks over at GigaOM says that, you know, Hollywood drives people to piracy. You know, you look at Hulu. You know, Hulu still is very limited. And, um, but we know that part of the problem is, is that, what happens is, and this is what we, we this discussion was, I had with multiple people, even at CES, is that if you want HBO and you pay for HBO with your cable service, and let's say you're paying fifteen dollars for that, probably about ten bucks of that goes back to HBO. Okay, the cable provider makes five or whatever his cut is, and then what happens then is each seat. HBO gets a cut. Now, if, if HBO's off the, the uh, um, cable, if I want to buy HBO separately, um, I am definitely don't want to uh, pay $15. I want to pay like 7 so that HBO still gets their money. But who you're cutting out is the cable provider, and cable provider doesn't want that. So they tell HBO, don't you dare make your service available digitally because you're going to impact my business. So there, there's this tug of war going on, and um, that's part of it. And also, they can't make as much money on the digital side for advertising as they can from what they're just arbitrarily be able to charge um, for their advertising on, on television because there's not this huge accountability issue. And in digital, they're held accountable. So... Anyway, while this was all going on today, yesterday, of course, was the SOPA slash PIPA um, boycott. You guys have came over to Geek News Central. You guys saw that I had a black banner across the website that linked you back to um, a page to talk to you about, the, uh, about SOPA and PIPA and how bad that uh, legislation is. Um, I didn't blacken out the entire website. I uh, just uh, basically put the line through it, made it a, basically a availability for people to see I was supporting and at the same time be able to uh, visit um, and look at the uh, the issues. So at the same time that this um, boycott was going on, guess who was in Hollywood to raise money? Well, Vice President Joe Biden was at uh, cruising around Silicon Valley. <coughs> Excuse me, not Hollywood. He was cruising around Silicon Valley uh, trying to raise cash from tech CEOs. So here he is. You know, the, the White House came out and said, oh, we're not, we're against certain provisions of SOPA, which was good that they did, which has upset their Hollywood friends. And Hollywood would say, well, we're, you know, here's the hand. Uh, don't come asking for money for us for re-election. So because that, so now that the White House basically said we're going to not support certain aspects of SOPA, then you got the vice president in the valley saying, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me some cash. Um, you know, these guys, it's just a big money machine. It's a big scam. You know, that's what, oh, we're, we've, now we've upset the Hollywood folks because we're not going to support this action. So now we're going to go back and we're going to go over to Google and we're going to go to Yahoo and we're going to go to all these companies and say, okay, we've acquiesced. We were now... Put some green in my hand there so we can get the president reelected. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's funny how it works. So, you know, very convenient that the vice president was in the Valley yesterday during the soap and people block out. Uh, very interesting. Now, Senate leaders from both parties have backed away from the Protect IP Act. 
But what's really got a bunch of people upset, and I was reading this on a variety of websites, uh, more, and here's the weird thing. Up to this point, of course, the guy that introduced the SOPA bill is a Republican out of Texas. So up to this point, the Republicans have typically been the bad guys in this type of legislation. And they you know, generally have been bigger supporters of it than Democrats have been. But what's going on now is that a large majority of the Republicans that had their names attached to this bill have basically said, oh, no, you know, the heat's too hot in the kitchen. So I'm, I'm done. I'm walking away from this. Whereas the Democratic uh, counterparts have not. Now, that's not to say some haven't. Um, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said he will not seek to use his leverage over other Democrats to ensure that the um, Protect IP Act gets uh, um, – then this is a whole different situation. So basically there is some pullback by politicians um, to some of these different acts that are in, in, going into place. So Protect IP is completely different. But um, so we'll see what happens here. Um, oh, I guess he's pulled back on PIPA as well. Protect IP Act, as he says, is going to going to hold back. So, so has the minor, minority leaders also said that he's would has. There's got to be changes before this thing could ever come forward. Now, a bunch of other senators. Let me look here. Senator Mario Marco Rubio, he uh, basically uh, delisted as a PIPA sponsor, co-sponsor, um, PIPA backer. Senator Roy Blunt. I don't know what party he is. Um, has basically said he is not going to support PIPA. Senator Mark Kirk has decided he's withdraw his support. Senator Orrin Hatch, I don't know if he's a Republican or Democrat, but he has said he is no longer co-sponsor. Uh, Senator John Boozman is no longer uh, backing PIPA. Um, but also represent Ben Quayle and Larry T. T uh, Lee Terry have quietly withdrawn as well. So, you know, we've got him on the run here, which is good. So that, you know, that uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, but the RAAA, they, they, they had to get their shot in, right? So the RAAA says, here's what they say. After Wikipedia blackout, somewhere a student today is doing original research and getting his or her facts straight. Perish the thought. So, you know, the RAAA was doing these little tweets yesterday and today, these little quippy tweets, and because they're upset because the public has stood up and said, we've had enough. And you guys need to listen to us. We'll see if they do or do not. But the MPAA and the RAAA's con cons uh, consenting response is, is pretty typical. Now, sadly, though, the Supreme Court, on the other hand, has ruled that Congress can re-copyright public domain works. So Congress may take books, musical compositions, and other works out of the public domain where they can be freely used and adapted and grant them copyright status again, like the Supreme Court ruled on Wednesday. In a 6-2 to ruling, the court ruled that just because material enters the public domain, it's not, it is not territory that works may never, that works may never ex exit. Oh, that's weird. So um, the top court was ruling on a petition by a group of orchestra conductors, educators, performers, publishers, and film activists, archivists, excuse me, who urged the justice to reverse an appellate court rule against a group which has relied on artist works in the public domain for their livelihoods. They claim that recopying public works, public works would breach the speech rights of those who are now using those works without meaning, and that's true. But um, they definitely have, this is really a big loss for us in that um, now stuff that's older than uh, 1923, Congress can basically say, hey, this still has a copyright applied. We'll see where this goes um, now because this is, this, is a, this is obviously a big loss for us um, in it that Congress can recopyright stuff. Now, would they? Would they recopyright stuff that's in the public domain? Yeah, maybe they will. That uh, I guess maybe we just won't play stuff that's uh, older, older than 1923. And uh, for those of you that are listening, I'm taking a shot of uh, water over here from time to time. Uh, let's see here. 
Someone in the chat says, hey, um, I use the crap out of mega upload to send files and uh, basically use it to send legitimate files, not uh, illegal files. So I guess now you send it where you'll have to pay. I think you had to pay to use mega upload as well, but um, definitely a, a big change here. Okay. Um, wow. What's going on back here? I got uh, something going on. I see what it is. All right. We'll close you. <coughs> All right, let's switch gears a little bit. Enough on the Mega Upload and SOPA and PIPA and all that other stuff. Over at the Daily Galaxy, dailygalaxy.com, from the X-Files, NASA refused triangular UFOs seen in footy captured by the Stereo B spacecraft. And uh, there's been a lot of people saying, hey, we saw something in the radar returns, and uh, we want to, you to tell us uh, what it was. And basically, NASA has said, oh, it's an artifact. It's something that we see all the time. And as triangle object was uh, definitely not a UFO. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, interesting. But anyway, stuff that has very straight lines um, generally don't exist in the universe, especially when they're, you know, a triangle. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next thing to extreme weather on Saturn, a 1.5 billion square mile storm. This thing's pretty impressive. Um, link will be up in the show notes. You can check it out. But uh, basically, this storm is uh, bigger than the Earth, and uh, it's uh, it's huge. It's uh, when those storms get churning on Saturn, it's pretty it's pretty wicked to see the uh, the satellite pictures that have that come back. And this one's being provided, of course, by Cassini which is uh, out there in orbit around Saturn and uh, some pretty remarkable stuff. All right, the, over at uh, researchbuzz.me, Arizona State University announced last week the launch of the new Project Gemini online digital archive. And this is an online archive of NASA's Gemini spacecraft flights. So this is pretty cool. This is available now. You can go to the archive. I went over there and looked at it for a little bit. Um, it's got this weird domain address. It's a top or a to, oh, excuse me, to the moon dot S E R dot A S U dot E D U. Um, so anyway, link will be up in the show notes onto this article. And, uh, these are cool to see these types of, uh, these photographs and stuff that, uh, are available. Even if they are uh, 40 plus years, uh, 47, 48 plus years old, hard to believe. Gosh, it's a long time. Um, all right, Google's claiming that Google, Google Plus has over 90 million users that are 60% of them are active each day. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. And uh, they're growing. But uh, with over 60% with over of them active, that's a lot of Google Plus tweets. And I guess they don't call them tweets, post, I guess. All right, remember the uh, Google Gigabit Network? Well, Google's Gigabit Network for Kansas City has been delayed, and uh, part of it is uh, they're having trouble getting the lines run. And uh, they're uh, having a fight with the city on how to hang cables to on utility, pole or on utility poles. Um, of course, you know, Kansas City is a testing ground for Google's move towards providing an open access network. And um, they're making progress, though. But uh, basically, they've... Uh, They've run into issues, and they're trying to work through it. So we will see um, what happens. Now, there is a um, – this was Kansas City, Kansas, but they're also building um, on the other side. They're on the other side of the, of the Mississippi. I think that's right, aren't they? They're split that way. Um, in Kansas City, Kansas <coughs> – so in Kansas City, Missouri, um, they're also building out there as well. So um, don't know what the progress on that is. All right, Google TV. Boy, I saw a lot of Google TV stuff at CES. And uh, we know that Google TV is picking up some steam here with the Vizio, Sony, and LG announcing new devices. And uh, Google's you know, definitely making some, room, uh, making some headway into the platform market. But what we also saw was a number of Android TVs. And, you know, I got to questioning uh, vendors, why are you going with an Android TV versus going with the Google TV? Well, it appears that 
the vendors want a little more control. So that's why in a, basically they're going to be rolling out Android TV based upon the 4.0 Android uh, build. And um, they feel that they can add more stuff on and still have uh, a great experience for users. It's obvious that uh, the cable operators and also the um, TV manufacturers are taking baby steps, but I don't think it's going to uh, be much longer before we see a lot of Android stuff available in televisions that you buy. And, and probably a lot of aftermarket televisions is where that's going to come into and some not so well-known brands. But Google is planning on making uh, frequent TV upgrades to uh, the Google TV software. They said that they intend to update by the end of 2012, incorporating new content, as well as more customization availability and so forth. So we'll see where, where that leads. Of course, you can watch Geek News Central on our tech podcast application that is available via the App Store on your Google TV. So definitely download that. Hey, what we're seeing too is all of our CES videos getting huge, huge, huge views on the uh, on the Google TV, Roku, Boxy, Samsung Smart TV. So it's just, uh, it's, it's I'm pretty impressed. I really am. You know, the longer the show goes here, you guys can tell my voice it continues to, to, to drown out. So I've got about 10 more articles here. Hopefully we can push through. Um, I got a number of emails. My email stuff is kind of out of whack a little bit because I wasn't copying everything over into the comment folder. So I may have missed some of your comments that come in. We'll, we'll talk about that at the, uh, at the end of the show. But what I want to do here real quick is I want to thank the folks at Mosey. All right. And I, I want you really to check this out because this is an absolutely great service. Um, I feel completely safe now um, with my entire business network here. Um, you guys know when it comes to running a business that uh, there are many things you have to get right. You have to hire good people, but you know, and you have to have a good business plan. But the one thing that's often overlooked is protecting the data that powers your business. And over 12,000 laptops are stolen at airports every single week. Matter of fact, when we were loading, uh, unloading the stuff at FedEx, there were some shady characters hanging around once again at FedEx in Vegas. And they, we said, okay, here they are. They're looking for a target of opportunity. And we had some data that was being shipped. You know, all the stuff that we recorded went in hand and also went shipped. So if we hadn't, you know, someone got a hold on some stuff, we could have totally blew the investment that we'd made in Vegas. And so you have to be very, very careful. But um, crooks, floods, tornadoes, and other disasters threaten your data. It threatens your data. And only 7% of companies that lose their data um, survive more than a year beyond that. So you guys know I'm now completely protected here by the Mosey, by Mosey Pro. And really what I want you to do is, is definitely check it out. It's easy to set up, saves you time. It's inexpensive. And your data is safeguarded in world-class military-grade store uh, servers and encrypted in a, uh, with military-grade encryption. Um, it's affordable. Again, if your business is not backed up with Mosey Pro, you really need to make sure your data is. Give my friends at Mosey a call. They've been doing this a long time, and they run the most secure, most trusted online backup service. Right now, you can save 15% by using the promo code PODCAST15. What I want you to do is get your pen here. Call 877-669-9776. That's 877-669-9776. Or, or visit moseypro.com. That's M-O-Z-Y pro.com. Thanks for Mosey Pro for being a sponsor here at Geek News Central. All right. Um, moving on here to more topics of AI. U.S. is losing R&D dominance to Asia. And this, uh, this scares me. U.S. companies are locating more of their R&D operations overseas. It's being reported that Asian countries are rapidly increasing investment in their own science and technology, uh, techno technology econo economies. And the National Science Board, uh, in a report released last week, said that U.S. multinationals nearly doubled from 138,000 in 2004 to 267,000 in 2009, on the education front, the U.S. accounts for just 4% of undergraduate engineering degrees awarded globally compared to China's 34%, Japan's 5 and 
Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Taiwan, so far 70% collectively. The lowest share of global engineering degrees in recent years striking well above half all such degrees awarded in Asia. So it's not a good thing of what's going on here with R&D operations moving outside. We've been the innovators. And, uh, you know, encourage your kids. Engineering, engineering, engineering. We need engineers. And uh, they pay them well here in the United States. So definitely get your kids uh, in the in the education tracks. They need to. I've got my son. He... He's, he wants to be an engineer, he wants to build robots, and uh, I'm I'm excited for him. I really am. All right, let's talk a little bit about search engine optimization. If you've got a website, pages with too many ads above the fold are now penalized by Google's page layout a logarithm. This is announced today, uh, talked about over at searchengineland.com. And uh, basically, you have too, much, too many ads above the fold. In other words, what you see when a page loads Google's going to penalize you and make your search results come up, uh, make your page come up lower in the search results. And they've come out with some guidelines. So I have that link for you to check out. Well, Kodak, you know, who would have ever thought, especially the, the folks in uh, in upstate New York, here, Rochester to be exact, um, Andy McCaskey was telling me that um, years ago um, when someone took the census, in Rochester, um, they asked which plant you worked in because almost everyone in Rochester worked at Kodak. Um, but Eastman Kodak declared bankruptcy, and uh, this has been a long time coming. But I think we can all think back. I know going back to my first uh, little point and shoot camera that I had, had the little bulb on it that would turn um, in the film, and of course, this the roll films, you know, that aging myself a little bit here but if i think back to really the early 90s or mid 90s when digital started to you know started to take hold you know kodak really resisted and um other companies you know, like in japan uh did not uh, they started and started to embrace digital because they could see the handwriting on the wall uh, Kodak waited way, way, way too long. But uh, we'll see what happens with Kodak. But, um, you know, here's an icon of America that uh, everyone knew what Kodak was. You know, if you didn't use Kodak film, you know, that was, I think you could buy Fuji film. That was about the only other film I saw on store shelves for years. So um, they're going to regroup. And they want to emerge as a world-class digital imaging and material science company. So we'll see. They've got lots of patents, so that will probably help them through their uh, reorganization. Now, how many of you have uh, tons and tons of digital pictures and some of them that you've cropped too tight and you need to uncrop? Well, if you don't have the masters, there's not a lot you can do. But there's a new software out there called Anticrop. It's an app that un can uncrop those photos by filling in the edges with just a few swipes, and it helps you expand the image, and it kind of does some duplication. It's pretty cool. I have a link up in the show notes for you, but it's called Anticrop, and it's a way to make that picture bigger. Or if you've got the picture is too small, you can kind of expand it, and it helps you do that digitally. Over on Ogizmo, hey, if you're an iPad 2 or iPhone 4S owner, um, if you're wanting to jailbreak it, it may be time to upgrade to uh, version 5.01 before Apple comes out with iOS 5.1. Uh, the iOS 5.0.1 jailbreak is supposedly coming in a few days. <coughs> but um, just be aware, if, the, if Apple releases 5.1 and you can't get 5.01, you're going to be stuck again. So uh, make sure you get 5.01 loaded so you can jailbreak that here in a few days. Cool. You know, they, they're coming out with all kinds of accessories for the iPad. And we saw just about every possible accessory there was known to man at CES. But the one I didn't see is this one. It's called iConvert. And basically what it does, it's a scanner for your iPad. And um, it, it'll scan by a, a 300 DPI. It'll take a, a standard a sized uh, document. It's 150 bucks. It's going to be available in February. But uh, if you want to scan something into your iPad, you can do that. 
This actually, your iPad docks into this and you actually slide through. I may have walked by this and missed it, but um, it's made by a company called, well, it's done by Brookstone. Uh, Brookstone.com. It's called the iConvert iPad Scanner. All right, Google's announcing a quarter billion Android devices worldwide, 11 billion downloads. So Google announced their quarter quarter earnings. Uh, Money-wise, Google said 2.71 billion in profit on 8.13 billion in revenue. Wall Street is not happy with that. You know, come on, they did 2.71 billion in profit. And, uh, but anyway, uh, Google announced 250 million devices. That's a quarter million devices or 250 million. I have been activated up up 50 million from quarter three. So that's pretty awesome. They say Google's also announced that Android market has seen 11 billion downloads. That's 1 billion more than Google had. It's 10 billion download celebration a, a month ago. So uh, that's pretty fast growth. Oh, you got to see this. We all heard about that ship, right? That tipped over and that, that captain. Oh my God. You know, you know, being in the Navy, and I I did 24 years in the Navy, and I and I was never on a ship. But, you know, it's it's no, who goes down with a ship? The captain does, right? Captain's last one off. But if you were in Belfast, this was your paper. And those of you that are listening, let me just picture this. Here's the Belfast, the Belfast Telegraph. And then below it, this big uh, heading says, win a dream holiday. Six fabulous breaks to choose from. And it shows this. You know, par- these uh, parents with their kids all smiling. And right below that, they show the ship tipped over. <laughs> this was a, uh, you know, if I'd have been in the Belfast Telegraph, I think I'd have called the company that bought that advertising space. And I would have said, do you really want to run this ad today? We can wait a couple of days because we're going to run a ship that's been tipped over on its side. We're going to we're going to run that uh, <laughs> today. So, um, you know, sadly, uh so far, I guess 11 people have died uh, from this uh, accident and uh, this captain. What a what a coward. Um, we will see what happens to him. But, uh, you know, th- the ship is obviously not in danger of sinking and he should have stayed on until everyone got off. Um, but uh, sounds like there might be a woman involved, too. So maybe he was tending to the woman and not tending to the navigation of the of the ship. Hey, it's been announced Time Warner Cable app streams live to TV to your iPhone as well. So it's not just an iPad only app now. So now if you want to load the uh, app to your iPhone, you can, and it'll work. And um, in part of the uh, earnings report, YouTube said, or Google said that 60% of YouTube videos are skippable. Um, I haven't seen too many skippable ads before, Um, but I guess a lot of them are. Microsoft announced this quarter two earnings, $20.89 billion in revenue, $6.62 billion in net income. And my last article of today, of course, Apple had their big education announcement talking about iBooks 2, talking about iTunes U, an iBook author. I just think this is awesome. We'll see what happens with uh, books going digital. If it's truly going to be school books that are going to be available for $14.99 or lower, how about college books available for fourteen ninety nine or lower? That would make a parent very happy, considering I got two kids that are going to be in college here in a couple of years. So um, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. Uh, college books will never be fourteen ninety nine or lower. I just cannot see it. Uh, see it happening. You know, one thing I have been using my iPad for is being able to access my PC here um, while I've been on travel, and it's been pretty cool because. Um, I lost, had a couple of files that were not, uh, available to me that I hadn't loaded up on the computer. I didn't have on my iPad and actually I was able to pull some PDFs down. That's pretty cool. So I've been using go to my PC uh, quite a bit. Um, if you're at work or you're on your way home and your boss wants you to come back and fix something in a PowerPoint, you don't have to do that. All you got to do is really, um, grab the new go to my PC app for iPhone or Android. And really, it's like having your work computer right in your pocket. That's, you know, that's really awesome. And take care of last-minute requests from anywhere with Go to My PC app for iPhone. And edit PowerPoints, update spreadsheets, work on any file, again, right from your iPhone, iPad, or Android. You can also log on to your Mac or PC with the Go to My PC app for iPad, too. So here's what I want you to do. I want you, and this is, this is 
a product we haven't talked about here on the show before, but it's one that I have loaded on at least five machines. Um, try go to my PC today and get a 30-day free trial. Uh, just by being a listener of this show, all you got to do is visit go to mypc.com, click on the Try It Free button, and enter the promo code podcast. Then download the free app to your iPad or iPhone. Again, that's go to mypc.com, Try It Free button, promo code podcast. Give it a try. All right, let me go ahead and get into listener email. And I apologize if I'm missing some stuff here. And right now, my throat is on fire. This is the most I've talked in two days. All right, Tim, I want to thank you. Tim's been sending me a whole bunch of emails. Uh, Thanks for sending me all these emails. Tim Tim sent me one about punishment for the SOPA mega upload shutdown, talking about how uh, Anonymous is doing. So that was, thanks for that. He also sent me one about the Fed shutting down mega upload. Got an email here from Andrew. He says, hey, Todd, of all well, great work at CS. I really like the individual blog post on uh, Geek News Central. Here's a quick link for you. Uh, Beer machine and Wi-Fi hotspot. This is very cool. Very cool. Japanese vending machine dispenses beer via Wi-Fi. Awesome. Um, Oh, boy. What is up with this? The Joy of Microsoft. Okay, let me load this because I haven't read this. Ah. Pedestrians have, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I want to talk about this. They've got an app. Uh, Let me have this. I'll just link this up in the show notes. And basically, it's the joy of Microsoft's avoid ghetto GPS patent. That's how this article is entitled. I'll let you guys go through and read it yourself. That's an interesting one, Tim. Thanks for that. Um, got a, another email here from Andrew talking about the New York city tech recycling in January. Thanks for that. I got a, another soap article to how, um, SOPA threatens the move. How SOPA threatens the cloud. This came in earlier in the month. Um, talks, of course, we got some more stuff on, uh, on Kodak, uh, chapter 11 filing. We've also got, um, now you see it. Now you don't. This is a, Time cloak. Let me let me load this up. And go through it. So there was a good article about some technology being used to uh, create a time cloak. Interesting. And someone asked um, me about using uh, TalkShoe for Geek News Central to help people that wanted to come in and and do more chatting. I really uh, I don't care for the audio quality over there. And uh, we got the chat room set up. So please uh, use the chat room at Geek News Central. Uh, we never really have kind of a live interaction part here to the show. It just, uh, it's never even been part of our format. Got an email here from, uh, from Rob. Thank you, Rob. And I got an email from uh, Brie talking about a storefront in Berlin. And uh, I'll have the link up in the show notes on that. And I think that's it. There's more emails. Some got missed. I apologize if they did. But um, still on the mend here from a throat and body perspective. So I appreciate you guys being patient with me today and uh, hope you enjoyed the first show back in the saddle here after being out for 17 days. But as always, you can reach me at Twitter at Geek News. You can email me geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. Definitely check out all our sponsors. Mosey Pro, go to my PC. And of course, GoDaddy, that CES2 code, here's the deal. Please share that far and wide. Um, We definitely, that will help pay a lot of bills uh, if we have a lot of people using that code. Um, Definitely appreciate any of you that do share it. Again, all the media that you're watching on Geek News Center from CES is being served from that uh, GoDaddy fourth generation hosting. And you guys will see how powerful it is. Now, uh, I think we're on a nine server cluster and I don't know the specs of the machines at all, um, but we've been moving huge, huge amounts of data uh, through those and it has been able to stay up, it hasn't slowed down, just shows you the power of this uh, fourth generation cloud hosting. Um, definitely check it out. 
Um, this, to be honest with you, I almost thinking that maybe Geek News Central needs to move on to that because it's a lot cheaper and it's got amazing power. It really does. It, it's pretty impressive. So um, for the price of the product for a year and that 25% discount, you can't beat it. Spread it around CES2 and thank all of you for your support. Thank for all the comment, all the folks that were watching the show and all the emails. We literally got hundreds of thousands of emails we haven't been able to reply to. Uh, my inbox is still completely overloaded. But uh, help thank us for making thank you all for basically pushing us past like the thirty five thousand viewer per day mark uh, during CES. Um, that was our peak thirty six thousand something. Um, but uh, that to me was just made me jump for joy. Uh, because we beat our numbers from from last year, so uh, but I'm glad to be back. We'll get everything dialed in here. We'll be back with you Saturday for Saturday morning tech. And then we're going to have a roundtable, a tech podcast roundtable, which is again bringing that back. Jeffrey and I are going to do a couple of training sessions. These are going to be uh, podcast media creator specific, so I think you'll enjoy those. We're going to be doing those on a regular basis now to kind of help promote the network and some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, but uh, lots of great content coming here. Next show will be from Silicon Valley. I'll be in San Jose, probably at the Hilton in San Jose, doing the next show. So um, look forward to, uh, and if any of you are in the Valley, uh, definitely drop me a note. I'll probably be available for dinner on uh, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday night. And uh, just let me know. We'll, we'll hook up. And other than that, we'll see you guys later. We'll see you Saturday. Take care. And then aloha.